These are the five most controversial moments in the history of the PGA. With the unique rule set of the PGF, there's really not that much room for controversy. But there is a little bit of room for controversy. No extra point. Yeah, Dilo Justin looks like he's trying to play some closed guard. Maybe to I don't want to be, uh, you know, too salty. You know, the commission's oh, word. T tell him how you feel. But I will say, uh, and again, handles. 448. Oh, man. The first controversial thing that I can think of with the PGF is from season two, Hunter Colvin versus Sam Barbosa, the lost footage. Unfortunately, I have some bad news. I messed up. There's a corrupted file on the Sam versus Hunter match. We don't have the footage. So I know, please don't kill me. I feel so bad. I take the heat on it, totally my fault. One minute. That was the only season of the PGF that was pre-recorded. And when we went to start putting the video together, it just wasn't there. And a lot of people thought maybe there was some shenanigans going on or that we were trying to hide the results. But the truth is, we just lost it. And I blame Keelan. Okay, here's a controversial moment from season one the phantom tap. Jeremy is caught in an arm lock and a lot of people think that he tapped. We didn't really notice it in the moment, but it may be that he escaped that arm lock because of like a, a kind of fake pseudo tap. Win that space back. Ooh, that's he's, got that, he's got that Americana style Udi Garami. He tries a big movement and he oh, gets Jeremy out. Oh, Beautiful. Nice. A lot of people were really upset about that one, especially when it came to the fantasy results. Here's another controversial moment from season one. Nilo Burgener versus the Elbow Genie. And I, you know, I gotta be honest. The Elbow Genie was getting beat up in this match. Like he was losing this match. And Nilo's passing his guard. He passes over near the edge and he gets the knee on belly on Jonathan but it's right at the edge of the mat. And right as he gets into Neon Belly, Jonathan hits him with that bump and rolls into the 50-50 from the bottom of Neon Belly. But because it happens right there, it starts rolling off the mats. And because it's happening right off of the mats, they stop it and they reset them in the middle. Again, handles. 448. Oh, man. Well, on the reset, the Elbow Genie he gets a little extra. So we have a little bit of disagreement. And so we're starting in a heel hook right here and he gets a tap, man. It looked like Nilo was sort of escaping his knee line before the reset. But when they start it back up, Elbow Genie's got that knee line all the way captured. Ref says go, tap comes immediately. And a lot of people were really mad at me about that one. So I am the one who made the rules for the PGF, and I've always felt that a choke is worth way more value than a joint lock. That's why I called them kills and breaks, and that's why I award six points for a kill and three points for a break. Um, oh, it's a neck crank, it's a neck, oh, he gets the tap, oh man. A lot of people think that neck cranks are way more serious and that those should be counted as kills. Uh, do, you, do you think that's gonna be seven or do you think that's gonna be four? Uh, I think that should be eight. Um. <laughs> Even though technically you're attacking the spine. With, with the PGF commission saying that's only worth a break, how you feeling? I mean, missed opportunity. I don't wanna be, uh, you know, too salty. You know, the commission's salty word. T tell them how you feel. But I will say, uh, you know, maybe we should ask uh, Tyler, you know, if I crank He, he did, old, he did ask, he asked Tyler. Uh, if, if I pull on that a little harder for a little longer, I, I don't think there's any argument, but I don't want to be too much of a jerk. Uh, but, you know, if that's what it is, then that's what it is. That's one of those tricky ones. We're not talking about a broken leg. We're talking about how much damage can you do to somebody's spine. I, I, I think the cranks are three, right? Yeah, but I, I don't know. That's why I don't we know got how the I commish. feel about that one. The executioner and the twister moving forward will be worth six points. 
so I had to listen to the people. That's what the people wanted. They all think it's right. I'll make the change. I gotta say for the record though, I still think you guys are wrong. This video is sponsored by X Marshall. They're a growing combat sports brand dedicated to bringing the community the most fun and high quality gear on the market. They've got some great new designs and some big sales coming up. Be sure to use the code BRANDON10 to save. The biggest controversial thing that's ever happened with the PGF though, the thing that has caused the most drama was definitely Evan Stapler's behavior. Did you do a punch toe? No, just... that's a little, that's like, <laughs> just yo, unfriend to Evan on Facebook. <laughs> This is the Evan I like. Posting the, on the face. The face push. Evan. That, I mean, he's wearing the right attire for it, at least. <laughs> oh, then we saw Evan looking for his arm triangle setup, and man, you talk about cauliflower ear, dude. Just yeah, that's a but the way that he was grinding on people and covering their face and grinding his head and his elbows and digging his knuckles in on people, it made some people super mad. Most of all, the Elkins brothers were ready to kill him. And I literally thought there was going to be a brawl mid-match. An arm bar by Mike. Oh, oh my goodness. There goes the face pushing. No, no, Mike's not the one to take that. <laughs> That's a hey, slap. Keep it straight, dude. Yeah. Keep it clean. I'll beat your ass if you do that to me, bro. I'm going to let you know right now. Fuck around and find out. And they told me I was, you know, getting a little carried away. We came here for jujitsu, not to fight. Like, I have actual, like, technique, and um, I feel like I'm kind of being just one-dimensional. And so he came over after the match, uh, and we had a conversation, and I just told him, I said, hey, man, look, like, that's not the way it is. You know, I said, dude, you need to understand, like, there's, there's people sparing your life. I said, I, I could have home run to you on the way down, you know? And maybe not the wisest choice, Evan. Oh, beautiful take. No one's, no one's explained to him the way the game works, and so we just told him, hey, dude, you are part of the squad, you know? Like, you don't have to... You don't have to win to get our respect, and, and you're not going to get our respect doing it that way, even if you do get the dub, right? I really thought that Matt was going to get up off the sidelines and run out there and interrupt the match and try to curb stomp Evan.